Hi, my name is George Garcia and I'm with Fusion 360. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a symbol inside of an electronics library. So the first thing we want to do is save our library. So let's go ahead and do that first. We hit save. I'll call it how to. You'll notice that it defaults to the library's location within the data panel. And that's because that's the location I have open. Always verify, especially if you have something else open in the data panel. But for now, we'll leave it here. I'll hit save. Okay, you'll notice it became version 0. I'm going to close the data panel. And that way we can start working on our symbol. So we're going to click here on the Create New Symbol icon. Now you're going to notice in this dialog that you have the option to import. Import is a mechanism you can use to reuse existing symbols. And most of the time, there's going to be a symbol that's at least close to what you need. So you won't often have to draw a new symbol from scratch. But for the purposes of instruction, we're going to draw a new symbol from scratch. I'm going to call it op-amp. I say OK. You're going to see that we've turned on and we are in the symbol environment. Now, one thing that I really want to emphasize is the grid in this environment. It's set to 0 0.1 inches. If you prefer metric system, just change the units to metric. It'll be 2.54 millimeters. But do not deviate from that absolute value. Don't change it. The reason for this is that all the libraries that ship with Fusion Electronics are built to that grid. If you deviate from it, you're going to find it very difficult to get things to connect. So we highly recommend that you stick to a 0 0.1 inch grid or its equivalent 2.54 millimeters. Now, in order to make it easier to see that, I'm going to go ahead and activate the grid. I'm going to turn it on, say OK. That way it's visible. You normally won't need to see it, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to have it on so that it's obvious what's going on. Now, we can go ahead and draw our symbol. Op amp symbol is just a basic triangle. Now another thing that we recommend to do is to center your symbols. And this becomes important because wherever the origin is in the symbol editor, that becomes the handle in the schematic editor. That becomes the grab point for your component. So by centering everything, it becomes really easy to figure out where the grab point is on the symbols, on footprints. This is a general recommendation center your components about the origin whether it be a symbol or a footprint it's going to make things a lot easier later on so I'm just going to draw the triangle I'm going to use control right click to change my bend style and there we are now you're going to notice there's obviously points along these edges that are not on grid what really matters is making sure that the pins the features that define connectivity that these are on grid so as you can see, the circles are ending up on grid. And if you notice here in the pin dialog, there's several options. They're pretty straightforward. You have rotation. You have function, which is used for logic circuits, so it's not really in play here. But if I start cycling through them, you're going to see you can put a, an inversion dot, if it's a clock signal, if it's an inverted clock. But because this is an analog circuit, we don't need to deal with those options. Length, very straightforward. You can shorten the pin, you can lengthen it, you can make it a single point. Now point is a little bit dangerous. You really should avoid using it, but there are occasions where it can be useful. If you have symbols that have like circles in them, point can make it really easy to draw connections on them. But most of the time, you can leave that default. Display is going to be important, so we're going to talk about that later as well as direction and swap level. For now, I just want to get the symbol finished. So I'm going to go ahead and place this, and these three pins are going to define the connections for this symbol. So if you notice, we have three pins, they're displaying their names, and we have these text here at the end of the pins. Now the center of these circles defines the connection point that must always be on grid. If it's ever off grid, you're going to have a lot of trouble getting things to connect. So clicking on a pin shows us its properties over here. Now you'll see the pin name, you'll see its position, and then you'll see those other options that we had in the dialog before.
So because this is an op amp, and if you're familiar with op amps, they have an inverting input, a non-inverting input, and they have an output. So I'm going to name this plus to represent the non-inverting input. I hit enter, and you'll see that it now gets the text changes. Now if we look here in direction, you're going to notice that there are several options. Now we document what each of these options does, but the important thing to remember here is by setting the direction, you're helping the ERC be able to verify the soundness of your design. So for example, if it's set to I.O., there's no special consideration. If it's set to an input, then there are some special considerations. If it's set to an output, if it's set to power, these are going to guide how the ERC checks. So for example, we know that in an op amp, the inverting and non-inverting inputs are just that, they're inputs. Okay, so we can set it as an input. You'll notice it changes to in. I'll do the same thing with this one. And then for the output, I'll go ahead and make sure it's set to output. Okay, so in the case of output, one of the special checks that's done for pins assigned to be an output direction is seeing if there's any other output pins on the net. So if you connect multiple outputs together and you short them, well, the ERC is going to tell you, hey, that, that's not valid. Because normally, you don't put multiple outputs on the same net. They'll end up fighting with each other, and it could end up destroying the circuitry. So by choosing the direction wisely, you can actually help the ERC check your design. Now, each of these directions is documented. Um, but what I'm going to do is you're going to notice in your screen, I'm just going to put a brief description of each one. So you'll be able to see that and be able to have a quick reference. Now, what what's the swap level option here? Swap level basically is the mechanism that's used to determine if a pin is unique or if it's interchangeable. A swap level of zero indicates that a pin is unique. It's not interchangeable with any other pins in the component. A swap level greater than zero will be used for any component, any pins that have the same swap level, they're going to be considered equivalent. So a simple example is imagine a resistor. A resistor doesn't matter which way you plug it into the board. So in that situation, both pins of the resistor would have a swap level greater than zero, and that swap level would be the same for both. By virtue of the fact that the swap level is the same, let's say number one, those two pins are interchangeable. And this can help you later on when you're doing the layout and you realize that if you orient the component a certain way or if you swap out a gate or certain pins that the layout will go better, that's where swap level really helps you. The other options, length and function, we have already discussed. Now, visible is an important option, and we're going to discuss that now. Now, because this is the output, I'm going to name it out but I don't need to see that text because by the design of the symbol, you know that that pin is the output. It's at the head of the triangle. So visible is going to help us here. You have the option off, which basically won't show you neither the pad name nor the pin name. That's useful for like resistors, passives like that, capacitors, inductors. Pad will just show you the pad name and this will become really obvious what it's doing when we go to make the device. Pin will only show the pin name and both shows both pin and pad. Now like I mentioned we don't need to see out in this case so I'm going to switch it to just say pad and what you're going to see is that the out is no longer visible but when we go and make a device we will be able to see the pad that the output is connected to. So the other thing I want to do here is change this to be a minus sign. That's going to be the non-inverting input. And then the only other thing we're missing is our name and value placeholders. So to add those in, we use the text command. Okay, and you're going to notice that I use the greater than sign. The greater than sign indicates that this is a variable, that this is just a placeholder and that it needs to be sub substituted with whatever the actual value is once this part gets added into a schematic. So greater than sign name. 
And notice it's hanging on my cursor, but it's on the wrong layer. So what I'm going to do is I switch to the names layer, which is where I want this to be. I now place it. I can then go here into the text dialog and now change it for the other placeholder we need, which is value. And this one should be on the values layer. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right here, value, and now I can say, OK, I'm done. So what you'll see is that we now have name and value placeholders are on their respective layers. And when we use this part in the design, these will be replaced with whatever the actual reference designator and value is. So at this point, we've covered everything you need to know to be able to make a symbol. So just a quick recap, make sure everything is on a 0.1 inch grid. You can set directions for the pins, which will help the ERC verify the soundness of your design. Swap levels determine what pins are interchangeable. And the visible function allows you to make either the pin, the only thing that's visible, only the pad, or both. So that's all for this video. Stay tuned for our next video where we show you how to make a footprint. Thank you very much for watching.